What's up, everybody? Got my new cut today. Wiring up my uh, Jetta for all those Volkswagen owners that wanted me to go through step by step on how to run the wires. It would have been like a 20 minute video. So I'm just going to sum it all up into the next couple minutes just to show you where I ran the wires, which wires I decided to run, what size. Um, I wound up going with four gauge. Um, so here is what it looks like now. Okay. Got my MA Audio amp looking nice and pretty. I have my power coming from the front, okay? Now, I just want to show everybody what I went with. Um, I wound up going with 4 gauge, and I'm going to explain to everybody why. This is the 0 gauge from the Explorer, okay? Now, if we hold the 4 gauge, let me get it into, out of the light, up to the 0 gauge, it's a huge difference, okay? Um, I mean, this is the good shit. It's the oxygen-free copper, so it's not like tinned aluminum or anything like that. It's it's going to handle between 1,000 and 1,500 watts easy. I'm not running anything crazy. The four-channel amplifier that came from the factory, the Monsoon amp, already has its own power. Um, so really, I only needed this for this amplifier, which is only going to push about 600 to 1,000 watts, depending on you know how many subs I upgrade to in the future. Um, now, in, the, in, in my Explorer, I had train horns, I had tons of LEDs, I had hundreds of LEDs throughout the truck, I had a whole bunch of stuff that I needed to power besides the subs, and that's kind of why I ran with zero gauge. And don't get me wrong, when I do the big three, I am going to run zero gauge under the hood, but for this build, I felt it appropriate to just go with four gauge. I tried putting zero gauge under the carpet and running it through the car, and there's absolutely no way it would have fit, either through the grommet that I made. I see if you can see under the dash where I put it. For looking at the dash right here, okay, just to give everybody an idea, um, for all the you know the Jetta and GTI owners, um, there's about six screws under here that are T15 or T10. Um, you take those out, this whole dash assembly comes out, and then there's a tiny apron under here, a metal apron that has three more screws. Once you take those out with T20. Um, you have clear path to the firewall and then all you do is drill a hole and pass the wire through but now the complicated part was all this right here all these pieces of plastic that you have to you know remove and then pry the carpet up with the carpets very taut it's very tight um, there's no room underneath this like there was in the Explorer like there will be in Fords and Chevys and shit these European cars were made you know, I mean, they were made to exact spec. There's no slack. There's no room under here. Everything was made really efficiently. And for me to have run zero gauge, it would have, I would have had to run it under the car. And with my car being lowered, it, it would have just been a complete fucking nightmare. So that's why I wound up going with four gauge. Okay. Now what I did, I removed all this, like I just told you guys. I passed my four gauge through an existing grommet in the firewall. There's actually one there. And then on the hood side, see if right behind the horn okay you can't really see it but it's right behind the horn right next to the shot tower or, or the strut tower um, right behind this guy right there okay so it's only about three inches below where your wipers would sit and then I snaked it all the way around my air box my intake and then all the way towards the battery okay and then I covered it with grommet um, to give it some sort of like heat shield and then in the back or I'm sorry, going all up the car, I removed both these pieces of plastic. This piece of plastic right here. And then the wire, if you pull the seat down, goes behind the seat and then into the back of the car. Okay. Now on the other side of the car, you have to run the RCAs. And the reason why you have to run them on the opposite side of the car, okay, is because the power wire, which is on the driver's side, is carrying a lot of current that interferes with sound signal traveling through these RCAs, these audio cables. So that's why you always have to run them on opposite sides of the vehicle. And then with the RCAs, you also run a tiny 18-gauge wire. Um, this is called your remote wire. And what this does is it hooks up to the blue, rem uh, the blue wire coming out of your head unit. And that's what's going to give the signal to the amp to tell it to turn on. Now, I'm going to end this video and make another one kind of going over where I mount everything but for right now the amp is going to be right here right next to my four channel my battery my kinetics going to go right here 
and then my 15 box is going to go right there, which is currently sitting over here. All right. And then I have my Kinetic HC2000, still pushing about 12 and a half volts. This thing got me through Sandy. <laughs> this actually, oddly enough, was in my Explorer um, when I was under five and a half feet of water during Sandy. And this is what, unbelievably, allowed my uh, truck to crank back over after four days of being underwater and having the lights on for four straight days. So these are excellent batteries. Um, but for now, I just wanted to give you guys an update, show you where I ran the wires. Any questions, as usual, leave them at the bottom. If you haven't added me yet on Facebook, add Josh Cavalieri. I'm going to be doing a contest tonight. And uh, that's it. All right, I'm out.